seventh British Open Golf Championship. Just behind me over my shoulder, I believe you can see the most famous landmark in the sport. That's the clubhouse of the Royal and Ancient. There it has stood for more than 200 years, and here they have played golf for more than 500. Normally, we would go right to golf action. That's our basic philosophy here at ABC Sports. But in this case, we're going to make an exception because St. Andrews is a special town, and this is a special course. First, then, let's meet St. Andrews. The story they tell here says that the bones of the martyr St. Andrew arrived on the shores of the Kingdom of Fife with some shipwrecked missionaries about a thousand years ago. They buried and converted the local king who built a church and called the town St. Andrews. In the graveyard today lie the bones of St. Andrew's most famous golfers, old Tom Morris and his son, the beloved young Tommy, who died in his prime at Christmas time, some say of a broken heart. St. Andrews is a university town. The university, whose buildings can be found all through St. Andrews, is the oldest in Scotland, chartered in 1412. Rudyard Kipling was once the rector. This is St. Andrews, a town some of whose buildings date to the 12th century. Still, the most famous landmark of all stands just off the Bay of St. Andrews, the clubhouse of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, ruling body of the game in Britain. Inside, old Tom Morris looks down on the room overlooking the first tee. To obtain one of those paneled lockers in the wall, you might have to be an RNA member for 40 or 50 years. The club was founded 22 years before the American Revolution. This is hallowed territory, coats and ties at all times, and a storehouse of golf memorabilia. For example, here is the first championship medal. Still, when all is said and done, the reason for St. Andrew's fame is the old course, like none other in the world. On a spit of land by St. Andrew's Bay, one plays straight out, around the loop, and straight back. All of the greens except four are double, serving two holes apiece. The old course is without a single tree and appears extremely flat to the eye. There's a single water hazard called the Squilkin Burn in which the ladies of St. Andrews used to wash their laundry. It's about two club lanes wide, snaking insidiously in front of the first green. There's a famous little bridge you'll see that was built by the Romans for donkey carts. A lady once asked, why did the Romans build such a bridge on a golf course? A golf ball hit short to the 18th green will find itself, as you see, in the Valley of Sin, a place from which few emerge unscathed. Now let's consider some of the other hazards on the holes we'll be covering today. From the tees, like the 13th hole here, most of the hazards in the form of intimidating bunkers are invisible. They're there, not off to the side to catch errant shots, but in the line of play to be maneuvered around. On 13, these are called the Coffins, a grisly name for a grisly place to be if you're fighting for the British Open title or even for a one-pound bet. Let's move up to the long 14th hole, one of only two par fives on the course. There you will discover, with a slightly imperfect tee shot, the dreaded Beardies. Jack Nicklaus was in there just the other day, tangled in the Beardies. Another famous bunker on the same hole is called Hell. Legend has it, that a player went into the famous hell bunker and emerged after a long spell. His opponent said, how many? The man replied, I went in at 12.15 and it's now a quarter to one. Make your own estimate. Have a look now at the principal's nose on the 16th hole. Its yawning sand-filled nostrils have inhaled many a well-intentioned shot and snuffed out hope for a championship. The bunkers look small, but it seemed to draw golf balls like a magnet. The road bunker on the famous 17th, the road hole, has been particularly nasty to the players in this year's Open. An example? Well, consider the plight of Brian Barnes, a well-known Scottish golfer who once beat Jack Nicklaus twice in one day in the Ryder Cup. Barnes was on the 17th green in two, then putted, and this was the result. And that, fellow Americans, is the sort of thing that can happen on the old course at St. Andrews in Scotland and nowhere else in the world of golf. ABC Sports presents one of the world's great sports events. Conducted by the Royal and Ancient Golf Club, today by satellite from the old course in St. Andrews, Scotland, it's the final round of the 107th British Open Golf Championship. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to see and test drive their exciting cars and trucks. At Ford, the better ideas keep coming by Aetna Insurance Company, affiliates of Connecticut General Life Insurance Company, Hartford, by Wilson Sporting Goods. Make the winning tradition part of your game with golf equipment from Wilson. And by Master Charge. When you carry Master Charge, you carry clout, the number one card used by more people in more places to buy more things than any other card in the world.
Here is how they stand at this moment in the British Open. Jack Nicklaus by one over Tom Kite, Peter Oosterhuis, and Simon Owen of New Zealand by two over Ray Floyd and Bob Shearer of Australia. Other leaders, Aoki of Japan, also at minus four. Then Tom Watson, who has been falling off the pace. He was a co-leader when the day began. Then Schroeder, Cahill, Moody, and Crenshaw. As for other prominent players, Mark Hayes shot 67 today and came in finally at minus one for the tournament. And you see some of the others. Green, Ballesteros, and Hale Irwin. Lee Trevino came in today. Here he is at plus three. Arnold Palmer at plus four, all for the tournament. Gary Player finished at plus four, and Andy Bean at plus seven. Final tournament scores. Now let's take a look at some of today's early play. We'll start at the first hole. And the first man we're going to see is Tom Kite of Austin, Texas. He started the day at minus three, very much a contender, two shots off the lead. This putt for a birdie on number one, having come safely across the swoke and burn, and Tom Kite got off to a fast start, going from minus three to minus four. There's a great tradition here that when the players come up to the 18th green on the final day, they all receive an ovation. But here's a new one. Jack Nicholas getting an ovation, leaving the first tee. Don't think we've seen that before. Nicholas was starting the day, remember, at minus four. That is when the day began a while ago. They love their golf, and they love the great players of the game. Applauding him as their ancestors applauded Bobby Jones. And long before them, smaller groups applauded Old Tom Morris, and Harry Barton, and James Braid, and Jay Staler. Here, we have Simon Owen at minus four, hitting a second shot on the third hole. Here you'll see the double greens we're talking about, the yellow flags for the hole going out. And look, he almost hits another player who's playing on the hole coming in because he hit the shot considerably to the left. Red flags coming back in, yellow flags going out. There's the yellow flag that he was aiming for way over there on the other side. Jack Nicholas now putting for a birdie on the third hole. Minus four at this point. And now. Just now. Minus five. Nicholas getting his first birdie of the day. Looking confident. Looking in command. Now Tom Watson putting for a par on the fifth hole. He had already bogeyed the fourth. As you'll see, he misses this one for another bogey. He then went on to bogey six and seven. In other words, he bogeyed four holes in a row and was dropping fast. Now, our man on the golf course, as usual, will be former PGA champion Bob Rossberg. He followed the players through these early holes. So let's get a report from him on the mood of the early play. All right, Bob. Thank you, Jim. After watching the players play the first five holes here today at St. Andrews, I think the change of direction of the wind has been a blessing for Nicholas. It has totally turned around from the first three days of the championship and is blowing into the players on the outward nine and with the players coming home. I think both Kite and Watson have not played the golf course with this wind and are going to have to rely very heavily on their caddies. Nicholas has had experience here. He's played three or four times in this type of weather. I think it's a natural for him. Booster House is under a tremendous amount of pressure, playing not only for himself, but for all of Britain. It's not a Ryder Cup, even though he's had a great record there. The Ryder Cup is one-on-one, -on -one, and here he has to beat everyone. I'd also like to acknowledge the play of Orville Moody, who has had a sensational championship. I'm really happy for him. Now back to Jim McKay. All right, Bob, there's the old clubhouse, so the day is warm, the sky is cloudy, but the wind is up at the old course at St. Andrews, a classic venue for the British Open. We'll be back with play. The Aetna Insurance not only played in the British Open, but has finished in the top ten, so as usual, you know whereof you speak. Does this not, however, look perhaps like one of the most classic of all British Opens? They seem to always be, Jim, and of course, when you play at St. Andrews, which is, of course, unique in itself, when you have the double greens on a number of holes, and the golf course at its widest point is only about 125 yards when you go out, you get to the loop, and then you start home. And just a little bit of wind change today, as Rosberg pointed out, has changed the golf course entirely, and it's hurt a number of players. 
you're, uh, you have an international field. It's, if there is an international open, the British Open is it every year. You have We've got Shearer. an international dogfight for the lead right now. Absolutely. Oosterhaus, Aoki, Shearer, and of course Nicholas, Kite, Tom Kite, who there's not been enough said about this year. It plays very well in major championships. And of course Nicholas, who plays well in every tournament, uh, maybe he does have a little bit of an advantage because he has played here under these conditions and not only uh, being the player that he is. They're headed for home on the old course at St. Andrews. Let's watch some golf. Let's pick up at the old Fitz this week. Right now, however, Ray Floyd is playing his third shot on this par four, and he is minus four for the tournament. Fighting again for the lead. He had fallen back early in the day. Now he's had a series of birdies. A good shot. Wonderful shot there. This whole gym is a magnificent par four, if you can call it that. Uh, there have been sixes and sevens by people with really good rounds. He's played along with Hubert Green, who got off to a, a pretty good start today. He had a low round yesterday of 67, or one of the low rounds. Here's the way they stand right now. Nicholas has just taken the lead by himself by one stroke over Kite, Oosterhaus, and Simon Owen of New Zealand. Then Ray Floyd, Bob Shear, the Australian, Aoki, the Japanese, and then down to Tom Watson, who has had big problems. There you see Fowler, the Englishman, John Schroeder, Cahill is an Australian, Orville Moody, the former U.S. Open champion, had a fine round of 70 today finished two under Ben Crenshaw is having his problems then you see Jumbo Ozaki who has finished and Weisskopf we're on the 13th hole now with Jack Nicholas. this is his second shot on this par four hole hole across in it's called remember all of the greens are double greens Nicholas has just made a birdie has taken the lead that's another good shot but you can see that wind uh move that ball quite a bit there if you hit short there's a big mound there we watch Raymond at 17 now uh, He's going to have any chance to win, Jim. He's got to make this and try to birdie 18. He's playing quite short today. Ooh, what a nice little four that is. That's a beautiful bar for Ray Floyd to keep him in contention and very close at minus four for the tournament. He moves to the final hole. Here is Tom Kite on the 16th fairway. This also a par four hole. Tom Kite at minus five. One stroke behind Jack Nicholas. You can hear him say that's got to get up, but it was plenty. Didn't want to get up much more. No. Bunker yawning for the side. There you get your first shot of the uh, double green. That's the flag going out on your right and the inward bound with red. Okay, a look again at the old clubhouse. There is how some of the other leaders stand. There is the top leaderboard, Nicholas. Jack Nicholas putting for a possible birdie. On the 13th hole, a long putt. The size of that green. Well, he can give this a pretty good run because, believe it or not, the wind does affect it a little here. That's uh, not too bad a roll. You can't tell from that angle how close it is. It looked two to three feet to me. Nicholas started the day at four under. He's two under on today's round. Playing extremely well, hitting the ball well. It's awfully loose this morning, it seemed. You know, he was happy, relaxed. I've never seen him any more relaxed, and we're watching him on the practice tee, as you know. I've, I've never seen him hit the ball any better. This is Bob Shearer at 17, the road hole, 461-yard par four that has eaten a many a player's lunch this week. He's had rounds of 71, 69, 74, and he's two under on today's round. This his second shot on the par four hole. See some turf and sand combined fly there. Headed toward the old town. Oh, what a great shot. Will it go over? Or will it no, stay? that one's going to stay, right. Jim. But there <laughs> is the famous road in back. There's first a kind of cinder path, and beyond that, at the very bottom of your picture, the beginning of an asphalt road. You play off it if you're on it. Some of the old timers are. Simon Owen for his possible birdie, playing with Jack Nicholas, remember, this young New Zealander putting in an amazing, amazing and gritty performance. He's staying right with Jack almost, just one stroke off the lead. They both started at minus four. Each is under par to this point. 27-year-old New Zealander, his big title so far, New Zealand PGA and the Malaysian Masters. But that shows you the quality of golf throughout the world. You know, people at home have not heard of Simon Owen, and yet here he is head-to-head uh, -head with Jack and just staying right in there. Coverage by our colleagues of the BBC. These are their pictures you're watching as Jack takes his time as always. All right, another par is down. It's 
Curry remains at minus six. Jack Nichols hoping that he might be headed for his third British Open championship. Ray Floyd now on the 18th with his second shot. This is a short par four, remember. You can hit as far left as you want with the tee shot, but now he's going to have to either fly over or more likely chip through the Valley of Sin. That's exactly what I think he'd do is chip because you cannot stop it there if it you is. get the ball in the air. And that's downhill from there. Start stopping, Raymond. Well played. The Valley of Sin, of course, being that deep depression. You saw the ball come through that is on the putting surface, but try to putt from there sometime. Almost impossible. The reception for Ray Floyd by the people of St. Andrews in Scotland. He's played well all week, too, and just uh, as Nicholas not made any putts until uh, the last couple of rounds. Maybe the only fellow who has an American caddy with him, a fellow known as Creamy. Tom Kite on the 17th tee. He now is beginning the road hole, the one that has eaten them alive this week. Playing a little easier today, good deal easier, with the wind at their back. It, it's been against them up until now. You can see they weren't getting anywhere near that path that you see where the gallery crosses there in the first uh, three rounds, but now they're very close playing five, six irons into this green. The road hole, the one that has done in Arnold Palmer in this tournament. He took seven yesterday and the day before, finally parted today. Again, a look at the leaders. Nicholas by one over Kite, Oosterhaus of England, and Owen of New Zealand. Then Floyd, Shear of Australia, and Aoki of Japan. Tom Watson fading fast. We move now to the 14th hole. This is called the long hole in, and with good reason, 567 yard par five, a fiercer hole containing such bunkers as the Beardies. However, do you think he'll be past the Beardies today with the tee shot? If he hits any kind of uh, good tee shot, Jimmy, well, today you can reach this hole where the first three rounds you, you didn't think about reaching it at all. He's with the wind, keeps the ball down the right. Headed for the old town on the church steeple, Jack Nicholas. Coming home in the British Open, look out. Okay, okay. Flirting with that heavy rough there. Well, that, that's uh, left side there. That may be out in the fifth fairway. Here is a look at the 14th hole with the Beardies, the first bunkers on the left, and then going up, there's Binti, and there's Hell, and there's Kitchen, and there's Grave, and there's Ginger Bunker. Bunkers as, as far as the eye can see. And a lot of other names that you can't <laughs> call them. That's right. It's a par five hole once again, but today should be reachable for a man such as Nicholas. Ray Floyd now, we're back on 18 with this man who is four under par for the tournament and three under on today's round. That used to be a hotel, that big red building now dates to dormitory for the University of St. Andrews. And of course those grandstands are not normally there. Usually it's just a quiet little road. Good luck, however, at the man from North Carolina in his Scottish tan. Ray has not been playing great golf recently, but he's certainly been putting it together here. He's had rounds of 69, 75, 71, and three under today. This for the birdie that would put him at minus five, and only one stroke behind Nicholas. This putt should be fairly straight, Jim. It, uh, players get fooled here by thinking it's going to go left to right, and it doesn't generally go that way. Oh, yes! Yeah. Ray Floyd with a round of 68 today has moved into it at minus five. Now he has to sit and can only watch. The other fellows have to fade a bit if he's going to win it today. Not a bad place to be, though, James. Inside with five under. That's for sure, the former PGA champion, Ray Floyd. And Masters, where he tied Nicholas's record. Oh, yes, that's for sure. He won running away there. Again, a look at the leaderboard, and we'll return. Bye. For Bob Shearer of Australia, at four under, he's just two shots behind Jack Nicholas as he comes to the 18th tee. Remember, this is the short par four, 354 yards long, and with the wind at their back, they can drive pretty close to the green. But where you want to drive, Jim, is to the left side of this fairway. That makes an easier pitch through the valley of sin there. It makes it a little more straight on a, a bank shot. If you get to the right or straight at it, this is it'll really swing right to left on you. You can get some idea of how wide that fairway is. It is uh, actually shared with the first hole. 
Now you're looking down towards the 17th green again. Look at the uh, PGA Championship. That'll be the 60th this year. Coming up uh, starting on the August 4th through the 6th. We got a Friday night show, Saturday and Sunday at the famous Oakmont course outside Pittsburgh. It should be good. Tom Kite, second shot on the road hole, the 17th. Going for the right side of the green, trying to stay away from that bunker, the road bunker that has eaten many a hope this week. He's okay. Well, you could hear him say, just stay right there. A little left and you go into that trap. It's almost like a funnel into that road hole trap. And he really played a marvelous shot there. Well, the fine Japanese player, Sunuyuki Nakajima, yesterday was on the green in two, then putted into the bunker. Took four to get out and two putted for a nine. Now here's Tom Weisskopf. Playing partner today of Tom Kite. Weisskopf, one over for the tournament now, four over in today's round. It's not been a pleasant afternoon for Tom. And he's playing so well all week and just uh, nothing ever happened. That's a real fine shot there. Out on the course, we get the word that Peter Oosterhaus has bogeyed the 13th hole. So that puts Oosterhaus down to minus four. Two shots behind Nicholas. Oh, there's so many stories here. Here is Simon Owen now with his second shot on the long 14th hole. Remember, he's playing with Nicholas, the 27-year-old New Zealander playing the tournament of his lifetime. Okay, Dave. Bob Rosberg, can you see it? Yes, he hit that ball way left, Jim. It's really, if you can't reach the green, it's the only place you have a chance of getting close to the flag. If you're short of the green, you practically have no chance. Jack, I would think, is going to try and hit this three wood as hard as he can and knock it over if possible. Is he in the fifth fairway, Bob? Yes, he got a good break. He ran through the heavy rough. He's fine. To orient yourself on these greens when you see the double flag, remember it's yellow going out and red coming back in. He hit an double. iron shot there, Bob. Yeah, I really thought he would he would go at it a lot bigger than that. I have seen a lot of shots here today, and nobody stopped the ball anywhere near the hole, Dave. And I think he could have knocked it over the green. Now, that red flag is the one for this hole. And see, the, that green goes from one side of your picture to the other there a moment ago. Well, he might. Did he have a bad lie? Bob, did you get a chance to look at the lie? Because uh, where he is now, it'd be very difficult to get a wedge uh, close. Well, I looked at his lie, and I thought it looked all right, Dave. Uh, I don't know. I think Jack figures that if he can just get in an even par from here on in, he's going to be the winner. Mm -hmm. Remember that Bob Rosberg is out on the fairways with the Nicholas group. Now again, you're looking to 17, the grandstands built behind the road hole. Bit of golf history on a historic course. Earlier, I asked Nicholas for his frank and considered opinion of the old course at St. Andrews. It's my favorite place in golf. Why? Why? I just think that from what is here and as long as it's been here and what it's meant to the game and championships are still played on it today uh, and fellas still can't tear the golf course apart, you still have to think that all, all the things that were here uh, a couple of hundred years ago are still being, are still uh, of significance today as far as what you have to do to play the golf course. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you, you look up and you see the, the, the buildings of the town of St. Andrews, and I think, I think most other cities you'd say they weren't, weren't very attractive, but in St. Andrews they're beautiful. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, coming in America, we're used to modern buildings and things, but I, I, just, I, mean, I just love to come up the 18th hole and, and the view of what's there is just, to me, is fascinating. I just love it. And it's, uh, I think that most people that come here that have played the golf course enough feel the same way I do. Most of the American players that have played here a couple of times love the place. They just think it's, it's fabulous. Uh, uh, I frankly would love to see the Open played here every year, but uh, you know, there's other places where I suppose the Open should go. And... Tom Kite with his third shot on the par 4 17th road hole. Kite, a very realistic hope to win this tournament at minus 5. He could certainly use a birdie on this hole or the next. And... It will not be here, but as a good putt. Good putt. You make four here, uh, Jim, under all this pressure. Big swing, too, on, the, on that putt from left to right. Tom Kite of Austin, Texas. In his college days, he was overshadowed a bit by Ben Crenshaw, but not so today. Nicholas by one over Kite, Owen, and Floyd. Now we go back out on the fairway of the 18th hole to Bob Shearer of Australia. 
again. Remember that he is minus four. He's two shots behind Nicholas. Again, the birdie here would mean a lot. Well, he's got to get a birdie to have any chance. Uh, Raymond's already in at five yep. under, so he has to have a birdie to have a chance to win. Again, it looks like that's the chip and Ooh, run. He hit on Ooh. that down slope. That got awfully hot. That's going to go over the green, I believe. Yep. However, well, that's a little case of what happens when you play in a British Open. If he pitches it a little farther on the front of the green, uh, not just on that down slope, you see, it wouldn't have come off near as fast. And that's why the 18th that looks so very, very easy here can turn out to be very difficult indeed. Bob Shearer on his way to the 18th, and we'll be right back at the old course at St. Andrews, Scotland for the 107th British Open. Nicholas by one. Here is Jack Nicholas about to hit his third shot on the par 5 14th hole. What do you think, Bob Rosberg? Well, he's left himself an awful hard shot, uh, Jim. I really have to dispute uh, his uh, thinking, you know. Well, he has to, he's going to have to run the ball. He's not even going to try and pitch it. That's how hard it is and how hard the wind is blowing from behind. He can get any kind of bounce there, too, can he? That's just full of knobs up there. He's going to have to bump it right into the knob, David. And it didn't come off very good. It's going to be short. Mm. Yeah. Well, he keeps rolling, however. Gets about hole high there, Bob. Well, that's a beautiful shot. It's yep. uh, just a super shot. He got it up about 15 feet from the hole. Played a magnificent shot. Okay, Nicholas still holding fast then. On the par five hole, he has two putts for his par. If Jack Nicholas wins this tournament, he will have won all of the major championships at least three times. No one has ever done that. In fact, no one else has ever won all of them two times. <laughs> now the 18th tee with Tom Kite, fine young American tour touring professional. He's only won one tournament on tour. That was the Philadelphia Classic in 1976 in a playoff with Terry Deal. But he's had many good finishes. Especially in major championships. He's played very well on some very hard golf courses. Our coverage has not picked up the ball here. No, we can't see that one for the moment. We'll have to spot it for you. Let's go back. Bob Shearer. Shearer. The report is that Tom Kite is on the fairway, way on the left. Now Bob Shearer getting that close from his chipping position on 18. Remember, they're both playing the same hole at the moment. So Bob Shearer will not win the British Open. Ray Floyd is in at minus five. It's great to see him play well, though, because he was very ill last year, pancreatitis, and uh, didn't know for a while whether he'd be able to play again. Oh, he's on a special diet at all times and everything. Had a recurrence of it last Christmas or so, I think, but seems to be fit now. Here are scores of some other players who have finished today. You see Hubert Green at plus three for the tournament. Ballesteros, after leading early, uh, drop back, finishes at even. Hale Irwin, Trevino, Arnold Palmer, plus four, Gary Player, and Andy Bean. Let's take a look now at some of the Americans as they finished earlier today. Andy Bean came over here, very hot player, but his first time at St. Andrews, his father caddied for him. He had 73, 70, then a 79 yesterday. This was his birdie attempt on 18. The par gave him a 73 for plus seven. Very uh, creditable showing your first time here, though. Well, it's great to see him come over and play. I think more of play sure, because he really rounds out your golf education. He had an exemption. Now, Rocky Thompson here had to come over and qualify, and that, again, is very much to be admired, I think. I do, too. He's trying to play that same little run-up shot through the Valley of Sin there. And once it gets on top, it is very fast, and he's played a remarkable shot there. He had a 74 today for a plus 8 overall. Rocky Thompson, 73, 73, 76 on the previous days, and 74 today. Came over. Qualified, had his shot, and he had a good time. Here's Hale Irwin. He had rounds of 75, 71, 76. This is on the 17th hole, actually. You're looking at him today, coming up around those contours. This was his first putt. And again, we're looking at Americans who finished earlier today to give you some summation of what they did. Irwin, now you're seeing on 18. This is his final putt, I believe. He had a round of 68 today. Ended up at plus two. Score of 290. Keep thinking he's going to play well here and win one year. He's the kind of player that plays hard courses very well. Former U.S. Open champion at Wing Foot, you remember? And there was Mark Hayes. Hayes had rounds of 70, 75, and 75, but today he had a marvelous round finishing up here for a 67. 
He's had amazing. some good scores, Jim, in the British Open. He, that's a little bit strong there, but last year he shot, what, 63 at Turnberry? That's right, that's right. We can't quite put four together here yet. He's another one who certainly should someday. Round of 67, for a total of minus one, he was the leader in the clubhouse at that point. Again, this is earlier play today. That is tied for lowest round in the tournament with several other players. Lee Trevino couldn't quite put it together this week. He had 75 in the opening round, then 72, 73. Here putting on the 18th green earlier today. And the two putts here give him a 71, a one over par round today. A total of plus three for the tournament, 291. Very hard to come over without a little more preparation. He played last week and lost in the playoff at Milwaukee, which is great of him to do, but it puts him, I think, at a disadvantage in the British Open. An eight-hole playoff with yeah. uh, Salih Elder late Sunday night. Then, though, is Arnold Palmer doing the walk-up to 18. At one point, he had led this tournament during the second round. He had rounds of 71, 71, 75, another 75 today. What a great performance at age 48, and you can bet he'll still be coming back for a while. And I absolutely love him over here. That second round was 71 with a 7 at the 17th hole. And he had another 7 in the third round. The 17th, as we said earlier, really did a job on Arnold as it did 18 years ago in 1960. It also beat him. Cal Nagel was when he was going for the Grand Slam. Here is Orville Moody, the one-time U.S. Open champion, who came over here and has put him in his best four rounds in a long time. He had a 73, 69, 74, and today, you see him coming in with a round of 70, two under par. His total, two under par for the tournament. That's a great finish. Really is. He's, he's been playing very well all year. Let's hope the old Sarge is really back in business this time. Okay, here's some Americans who did not make the final cut. You see them, Watkins, Miller, Snead, Kratzer, Baird, George Burns didn't make the cut after the third round. Jerry Payton withdrew. He could have played, but he went home. And now Nicholas putting for a birdie on the long 14th hole. Had a little bit of luck on his tee shot as it ran through the rough and into another fairway. It is not impressive second shot, but a great third shot. Looks like that's how he played it, though, but uh, played a marvelous third to get this close. And he should be all right for the par five, but there'll be no birdie here. Now back to Shearer on 18. This for the par four. break that Doug Sanders took yeah. eight, or eight years ago. So for Bob Shearer, a bogey five that brings him in at minus three for this championship. He rounds to 71, 69, 74, and today 71. A fine tournament for the Australian. We'll be right back at the British Open along with these tens of thousands who have gathered here at the old course on a warm but windy day. Nicholas still leads by a single stroke. Owen. That's Simon Owen making a birdie putt on 14. He has tied Jack Nicholas for the lead. The amazing young man from New Zealand. And a smile comes to his face. Why not? And so that gives us a tie for the lead. Nicholas and Simon Owen of New Zealand. What a story that is. <laughs> Well, what was the price on Sam and Owen when he teed off here? Good. Okay, but don't nice. forget about Tom Kite, who is playing 18, and of course Ray Floyd is already in at minus five. If those two leaders should falter, he's still in it. Here is Tommy Kite. Don't play the pitch and run. <laughs> Kite on the putting surface and in pretty good shape. No one works harder than this young man, Jim. He, as you pointed out earlier, lived in Crenshaw's uh, shadow all the time. He was at the University of Texas, and he has really worked hard on his golf game. Crenshaw, by the way, started minus four today, but now is down to minus two. Tom Kite played a pitch and run through the Valley of Sin up onto the proper plateau where the hole has been cut today. So he'll have an attempt at the birdie three that could move him into a beautiful position. Move him into a tie for the lead with Nicholas and Simon Owen of New Zealand. 
Lots of nationalities fighting it out here, but in the end, it does seem again, with the exception of Owen, to be the Americans rising to the top. Floyd and Kite, and Jack Nicholas. Aoki is still out there of Japan. He's part every hole today. He's played 14 of them and has part every one. He's still at minus four. There's a look at the houses along the right side, golfer's right side of the 18th fairway. They've been there for centuries and centuries. There's the old Rusak's Hotel down there. One of those houses, I remember an American used to live there some years ago when we first came over. It's one of the great sights in the world of golf. More golf next week, by the way. Take a look at that. The U.S. Women's Open. Nancy Lopez, the hottest on the tour, but now Janie Blaylock. And now all eyes in this section of the course are on Tom Kite of the United States. A birdie putt that could tie him for the lead at this moment with Nicholas and Simon Owen. It's a hard putt, Jim. It, look, it looks downhill, and then it goes back uphill about four feet from the hole, so if you've got to hit it harder than you think. Look at that. And almost everyone is always short with that. It's, you just can't believe that, that it's... you got to believe your eyes. You think it's downhill, and the last four or five feet, it's uphill. So many people miss that putt by leaving it short or hitting a putt like that. And you know that's the last thing on his mind. He's got to get it up. Okay, if he makes this putt... Tom Kite will come in at minus five and tie Ray Floyd as the clubhouse leaders. And that's what he has done. Tom Kite with rounds of 72, 69, 72, and today a round of 70, two under par. He should be pleased. He really should be. I really admire that youngster. But it, now, Jack Nicholas with his second shot on the 15th hole. This is a par four, 413 yards long, walking away from it. Wondering about the wind, perhaps, uh, Bob Rosberg? It has died just a little for uh, a moment. And uh, Jack's hit a perfect three wood right in the middle of the fairway on the right side, which is the spot to come in on. Simon Owen has hit it in the left rough and can have a very hard time stopping it. Oh. About what club do you think Jack may be using there, Bob? I believe this is either nine or a little eight, depending upon what he wants to play. Okay, remember it's been three years since Jack Nicklaus won a major championship, and for him and for him alone, that is a long time. Right on it. Mm. Dragged up just a little. Yeah, pulled up short. There's a look at Tom Weisskopf finishing his round. 76 today, so it was not to be Tom Weisskopf's year, the man who won a Troon back in 1973. Throws the ball to the crowd. And they love the golf over here. They know the golf. And they're seeing some fight right now between Nicholas and Simon Owen, the last man you would have expected when they started the tournament this week. He had to qualify and just made it in by a single stroke. Then you have Kite and Floyd in the clubhouse now with their minus fives. Peter Oosterhaus at four. Aoki Crenshaw got one back. Minus three with John Schroeder. Yes, it's in the late afternoon of this Saturday, the final day of the 107th British Open. That is the clubhouse of the Royal and Ancient of, of St. Andrews, the ruling body of the game of golf in this country. Now we have Tom Watson on the 14th hole. Watson, who started out looking like he might win today at minus five, is now down to minus two. This for a birdie that he sorely needs. from the course that this man has just chipped it in. Unfortunately, the BBC cameras trying to cover everything at once weren't there at that moment. Simon Owen has chipped it in for a birdie. He's got the lead. <laughs> he has the lead. He's going to find out his little lonely oh. at the top. <laughs> Must be a little jolt to Jack, too. I'm sure he, he didn't even know who he was when he teed off today. Well, here is Jack trying to get that major championship that's eluded him for three years, trying to get that distinction of having won all the majors at least three times, something nobody's ever done. Nobody's ever won them all twice, remember? He alone has done that. And now, he tries to concentrate and try to make this for a three that he needs to tie him for the lead again. Plus, he can't be too bold. You don't want to, uh, if, you, if you miss, you don't want a three putt. Shades of Jack Flick and Ben Hogan, look at that. No. So, if he puts that down, it'll be a par four. He'll remain at minus six, but Simon Owen has gone to minus seven. It's going to be one of those Cinderella stories if he can hold on from here. 
I started to say shades of Jack Fleck and Ben Hogan at Olympic back in the mid 1950s, huh? Nicholas for the par. Okay, he's down in par, so Simon Owen has a one stroke lead. In the British Open, there are still, however, three holes to play, and that can be a long, long way. Stand by then for further same day satellite coverage of the British Open. And now Simon Owen has a new kind of responsibility. At first, he was just the playing companion of Jack Nicholas today. Then he moved into a tie. Suddenly, by chipping in on the 15th hole, he has the lead all by himself. The 16th, par four, 382 yards long, called Corner of the Dyke. Great driving hole. The more to the left you hit it here, the harder the second shot you have. You really want to be brave. You go between a trap and the out of bounds. Famous trap here called the principal's nose. There's that little humpback thing right there. Those two bunkers that you can see are the nostrils, so-called. Now, Nicholas, suddenly with a different problem. You know, all day long he's been playing par, par, par. I'll get my birdie here. I'll get a birdie there. And he's done, done exactly that. But suddenly, the unexpected. Out of nowhere, he's been blindsided by Sam and Owen. He but you sure. see his problem there, Jim. You can see the trap. Now, if he really wants to shortcut to the hole, you've got to flirt with the out-of-bounds on the right. They may be trying to decide, well, do I want to hit a driver? We'll look at a hole bottle here. Okay, there you see the principal's nose up there on the left, and the spectacles, as they call it. And the out-of-bounds on the right. Used to be a railroad line that ran here when we first started coming over way back in 61. But it is no more. Okay. Can Nicholas make the birdie he seems to need in the next three holes? Doesn't look like a driver. Doesn't look like a deep-faced. Uh, Rossi? Well, this hole's playing so short. Uh, Owen drove the ball within 50 yards to green absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And I imagine Jack uh, went back to a three-wood because he's driven it about 30 yards short of Owen, but right in the middle of the fairway. It's almost impossible, David, to stop the ball if you're going to pitch it up on the top today. Both of them well past the principal's nose, which came into play the previous days when the wind was in the other direction. Well, that's right. He just took it right over that with a three wood with no problem at all. Uh, the thing is, Jim, is that this hole was sort of designed to play a run up shot when the wind is this way. But to run it up with the with the big ball is a lot more difficult than it was to run it up with the little ball, which they played with for so long here. Uh, it's just a different game. It's more of a pitch game, like the American game now, but uh, with the pin where it is, it's almost impossible to stop it up there. Okay, the comments of Bob Rusberg from the fairway as you were getting another fuller look at our leaderboard. There is the golf shop of old Tom Morris himself. Still there. And the St. Andrews Woolen Mill. There's another club along there called the St. Andrews Golf Club. This is an artisan's club, the working men of the town. And some of the caddies belong to that. And they made Jack, Jack Nicholas an honorary member just this week. Tom Morris Golf Show. John Schroeder on the 18th tee. John at minus three for this tournament. Obviously has been playing very well. He's even par for today at previous rounds of 74, 69, and 70. He's playing with young Nick Faldo, a very promising young Englishman. He's going to be a real good player. He won their PGA championship here earlier this year. Boy, they're carrying so far today. He's very near the green. Well, downwind, you can get very close to the screen. The yardage, 354. The wind can change just a little. It can be a driver and an eight iron, or you can drive it into the fringe of the green. All week long against the wind, they've been just trying to get across the little road you can see out there, which is called Granny Clark's Wine. And which you must play from if your ball happens to stay on it. That's right, an integral part of the course. Here's a good look at Nick Faldo. You'll be seeing him more in championships around the world. Playing it left, as you said, is a good That's position. That's the place to go. There you see the flower boxes in front of the clubhouse. Members sitting in there watching the play through the window. Some of them out on the terrace here. Oh, there you can see the, the gentlemen inside. The, those who have the privilege of being a member of the Royal and Ancient. We return to Jack Nicholas. Remember, he's had a fine tee shot here on the 16th hole well past the big hazard here when the wind's against you. What's it look like, Bob Rosberg? 
Well, it's just a little nine iron. Uh, Jim, I would think at this stage of the game, he's going to try and bump it into the bank and, and, and get it close because he just, the way Simon's playing, he just can't wait and sit back now like he was. I think the 14th hole was a big switch. Does Simon look cool and collected or unconscious or what? Well, he got off to a terrible start. He, he looked very bad at the start and then has come back and is five under par since he made his two bogeys. Isn't that something? Well, there's Nicholas's shot. Beautiful out. Got it shot. Close. He has it perhaps close enough for the birdie that he needs to retie for the lead with Simon Owen. Should there be a playoff, it will be at 18 holes and it will be tomorrow and we'll be here along with other people from around the world who have gathered for the British Open, the most international of all golf tournaments, really. Now here is Simon Owen. As we said, he's 27 years old, current holder of the New Zealand PGA and the Malaysian Masters Championships. He won the 1974 German Open, the 1976 New Zealand Open. His only win in Britain was in 1976, the Double Diamond Invitational at Glen Eagles. Normally, he says he does not play seaside courses well. He's never played at St. Andrews before. He said that he, he had heard it was a goat track and wasn't looking forward to it, except that it was the British Open. And now he loves it. Why not? Well, thanks. Oh. Now, whoops, things could turn around very quickly. He's almost as far over the green, uh, Jim, as when he started. He's 30 yards over the green, and he was pitching from about 70. He's on the next tee, and what about the shot from him? Well, he's got an almost impossible shot from where he is. It's just, uh, I don't know, that, that is just the little thing. I think the, the fact that Nicholas put it in there close had a lot of effect on that shot he just hit. All right, well, very quickly, we conceivably could have a two-shot swing here, Dave. Well, that's uh, the name of the game. A young man's probably got a little fired up there, Jim, and he just blew that wedge right over the green. Still, however, Owen by one at this point, and don't forget, still about Kite and Floyd in the clubhouse and Oosterhouse, who has picked up another birdie to go five under par along with them, and he has plenty of holes to score on. There's a look at the St. Andrews Beach, and actually some people in bathing while all this is going on. Now John Schroeder on the 18th fairway at minus three, Always has that characteristic way of lifting the club in the air before he brings it down. The son of one of America's great tennis champions, Ted Schroeder. Ooh, my goodness. It looks a little hot there, yes. too. Mm. Hold it. Clear across the green and up against the wall. I uh, see hope not. bounced off him. John Schroeder, very, very upset with that one. As he might be, he's still three under, even on today's round. But the battle is joined between Owen and Nicholas and Oosterhouse from here on. We'll be back. Here we are with this incredibly difficult shot of Simon Owen. He selected a putter, Bob? Yes, yeah, it's going to be the longest putt in history. <laughs> well, he's got about a 50-yard putt with about 30 yards of it in fairway. It's close clip, but it is fairway. Dave, would you see a shot like this anywhere except St. Andrews? I believe he's left it way short. Oh, come on. Come on, where is it? Well, it's down in oh, the valley, coming Jim. back. Yeah, and it's coming back again, Bob, but it's still on the putting surface, but with a very difficult undulating putt coming up for his par, whereas Jack Nicklaus has a possible birdie. I really believe that he's kind of lost his nerve. Uh, at a, at a very crucial time, Jim. Uh, he had a wedge shot that he had a beautiful, crisp lie, and he could have really spun it in there. He's going right into the wind, and he chose to play the very safe shot of not making five. Okay, we're looking now at John Schroeder with his third shot on the 18th. Remember, he ran it clear across the green into this heavy rough. A man would not want to fly it back into the Valley of Sin from here, would he? No. And yet, you see the some of the best players in the world have trouble with this hole, and if you ever picked one hole you thought you could make four on, this is it. Did you see how far he left that from the flagstick? Now, to you at home, you'd say, gee, I could do better than that. No, you couldn't. Not from there. <laughs> Not from on where? the 18th at St. Andrews. Now, back to the travail of Simon Owen. And a quick look at Peter Oosterhaus. Oosterhaus, remember, on the 16th tee is at minus five. He's two shots behind Owen, but not for long. One behind Nicholas, but Nicholas with a birdie try. M many possibilities, as you saw, that's in very good shape. OK, 
Okay, so that's so much for oh, Ooster House. Playing the same hole as Owen and Nicholas. There it is. No, good one, putt. One pass. Good putt, though. No time to, to get too foolhardy here. Just make your five because, as Rossi said, he, when he took that putter, it looked like he was just trying to, to not make any more than five mm -hmm. there. He eliminated practically his chances of making four. Remember, he started the day at minus four, dropped to minus two, then got to minus seven, and now to minus six. Nick Faldo for a possible birdie at 18. The fine English player has almost, almost done it. That's right up that hill. Players can't believe how much the ball will slow up in the last four or five feet there. However, the even the tap-in will give him an even par round of 72 after rounds of 71, 72, and 70. Very consistent golf for this young man. The English are finally mounting a bit of a charge in golf, and here is a man who, with this putt, could take the lead, retake it after just having lost it. Did he hit it? Oh, boy. Oh. Jack Nicholas is in first place in the British Open. He now is minus seven, and Owen is minus six, the shoe almost literally on the other foot. Okay, and behind them, Oosterhaus. Who is at minus five? And all around the quiet town of St. Andrews, it's seen it all before so many, many times in the more than 100 years that the British Open has been played. A beautiful old town, a university town, as we've said. But it's Nicholas by one and by two over Kite, Floyd, and Oosterhaus. John Schroeder now with a long putt for a par four in the 18th hole to keep him at three under for the tournament and even par for the day. So I'm in the practice tee this morning. He didn't look particularly happy with the way he was swinging. Sometimes you get it back. Oh, yeah. There you go. A little routine four for John. That's a great finish. He started 6-5 the first two holes in this tournament. Well, that's the kind of a bar you'll see at St. Andrews once again. A fair tee shot, running across the green into the long rough, Bad coming back and then knock it in the hole. Just don't give up. Just keep trying. Previous rounds for John Schroeder, 74, 69, and 70 yesterday. Par on the course is 72, and that's what he had today. Jack Nicklaus now with the tee shot on the road hole. This is the one that could be the decider here. Again, Jim, this looks like a three-wood to me, not mm. a driver. Unless he's got some shallow-faced driver that I haven't seen him use. Well, he had the regular one on the practice tee this morning. But with the whole playing downwind, you, you, length is not your problem. You want to be sure and keep it in the fairway. Okay, well, he's kept it quite short, much shorter than many people have today. And, of course, that's because it was the three-wood. The other's using drivers. He's well short of the pedestrian crosswalk that you see there. Not made to look like that, but that's been made that way by the footsteps of many thousands of people this week. And now Simon Owen. Here, here's the real test of his composure. Having taken the lead in the British Open from Jack Nicklaus and now lost it, can he come back again or at least hang right in there and hope for a break? Well, just play the one shot at a time. Just try to keep doing what he's been doing that got him here. That looks like a driver. Yes. A driver really won't do much good here, David. Yeah. Yeah, I've said... Jack is only about 20 yards short of the crosswalk with that three wood, and it gets really narrow if you go any further than that. Right. How do you like uh, his swing, by the way, Dave? Simon Owen? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. he's, he's got a good swing. Uh, he's hooked it way not, left. Not that time, but the ball's sitting up all right for him, but yep. he really has that hole, uh, that road hole bunker there to contend with. Okay, well, there's a look at it. The dark object on the right is the Old Course Hotel, which didn't used to be there until fairly recent years. It used to be coal sheds, and you could drive across them and cut off as much as you wanted. Now you have to stay left of the hotel. But that bunker right by the green, called the road bunker, is the one that has been the most difficult single piece of sand on this golf course this week. That's <laughs> where about half the players have gotten their mail. Peter Oosterhaus, second shot on 16 now. He at minus five, two shots behind Nicholas, one behind Simon Owen. Come on, wind. You can hear him say, come on, wind. Well, he's probably hoping it would move it from right to left there, and it never did move it back toward the hole. See how it keeps running and running over there. 
there's a tendency to run off this green on the right-hand side. That's another thing about green to Sinatra. There you see the two flags, by the way, the yellow flag on the right for the hole going out and the red, red one for the hole coming back. And Oosterhaus in the yellow sweater down the fairway there with his fellow competitor today, Tom Watson. Watson once again started the day at minus five. He's now minus two. He bogeyed four holes in a row back on the front nine, and that was his undoing. But from what Bob Rosberg said, at no time has been swinging in his usual way. I was worried the first part of the week about his balance, he said, but I thought he'd conquered that to watch him play the second and third rounds. Can a win like today's, which is not tremendous, bother your balance? Oh, yes. Plus, uh, mm. oh, what a nice shot there. Plus, as Bob pointed out, the course is entirely different than it was the first three rounds. The wind in the opposite direction makes the course play just... You can't imagine how much it changes these holes. And again, the crowd gathered, waiting for Nicholas and Owen and Oosterhaus now along the 18th fairway. That's a little road that runs in front of those shops and houses and the old hotel there. Next Saturday, stock car racing from Daytona Firecracker 400 World Lumberjack Championships. And there you see the times. And there you see the standings. Nicholas by one over Owen, by two over Kite and Floyd, who have finished, and Oosterhaus, who is still playing. Ben Crenshaw, Schroeder, and Aoki. Jack Nicholas on the road hole, the famous 17th at St. Andrews. If you go over the green, you go into the road. And if you're in the road, you play it from the road, which is now paved with asphalt. Say some of the old times think that's making it easier, right? Like, instead of all the rocks and stones <laughs> they used to have, they think they've eased the course up somewhat. I... If he puts the ball on the green, Jim, he's played a wonderful shot here. This is just great golf hole. Don't want to be left. Arnold Palmer twice went out of bounds with his tee shot of this hole. And there he is coming up. It's going to come back on him again, though, as so many have today. And boy, that is tough putting from there. He's got a very large bound to go up. He got a little bit of a bad break by the ball coming back so much on him. He's going to have a very big breaking left to right putt up over a hill. No question of talking about birdie now on this hole. You're talking about saving a par. Well, if, if four is par, it's like a birdie. <laughs> Here's Ben Crenshaw. Gee, he wanted so badly to win this British Open Championship. Still looking for his first major, although a leading money winner and just fine player. playing through the Valley of Sin on the 18th hole. Crenshaw now at minus three for the tournament, but one over on today's round. He'll have that putt for a birdie. Disappointment, you can see through the smile. One day, though, he'll win a major, and I should think more than one. He'll win a number of them. Now back to Simon Owen in the rough on the 17th. One shot behind Jack Nicklaus. Just a hole ago, he led Jack by one. What kind of lies he got, Bob? He's got a perfect lie, Dave, to play the kind of shot he's going to have to play, and that is to bounce it short of the green and just pray to God it hops over the hill right. <laughs> That's exactly right when it gets in the air. Well, well, the shot's been made. The prayers begin. Let's see where it turns out. Oh, it's oh look far. out. It's the road. Far. Yep. Yep. Across the road, back towards the wall, and you can imagine all those Scots there saying, aye, aye, he's done it. He's gone across the road. He'll have to play it from back there onto this green, and it's not an easy shot. So Owen may be fading. Nicholas, however, remember, is in very tough putting territory. Same-day satellite coverage of the finish of the 107th British Open. So you saw sad-faced Ben Crenshaw a moment ago. You know, it would have meant so much to him, as I said. He's a student of the history and the lore of golf, and so to win this tournament would mean more to him than to many others. As a matter of fact, I talked to him before he teed off today and asked him what it would mean to him to win the British Open. Well, you know, I think, I've said this week that it would probably mean more to me than, than a lot of other people. I, you know, the way I, the way I study about the game and, and uh, the affinity that I have links golf courses, uh, being kind of an architecture student and, uh, you know, the history of the game over here is just, you know, this is all where it, where it started and what great, great people have played the game over here and what great old players have trod this ground out here. So uh, I'm, I'm privileged to just play in the championship. Uh, uh, 
I feel fortunate to be right in there. And, uh, you know, if I play my game, I can, I can hold that cup today. Now, however, it looks like the cup will not be held by Ben Crenshaw. Still with an outside chance, but it looks like his hopes have gone to glimmering for 1978. We're moving toward the climax. With his turn on the 17th tee of the road hole, hitting across the corner, actually across nets which are stretched over the entrance to the Old Course Hotel for the protection of patrons. There have been a number of balls hit into the lobby here this week. That's in the rough. Ben Crenshaw spot for a birdie on 18. He's got it. And we have a correction on the score. He also birdied 17, so that puts him at minus five. Crenshaw birdieing the last two holes after being all but out of it. Comes in at minus five to tie Tom Kite and Ray Floyd who are in the clubhouse. A round of 71, one under par. Well, he's come so close. So close and yet so far. That's right. Because he is one of those players to whom victory is the thing. It's the only thing. Ben Crenshaw of Texas, a great college star, came out with great fanfare, won his first tournament, then had his problems playing. Here is Isao Aoki. We get a chance to see his putting here, Jim. I want you to watch how he holds the putter, where the, where the, where the blade is. Uh, <clears throat> Aoki, the best player in Japan at the moment. He won their big tournament just a month or two ago and uh, led this tournament, has been in there all the way, but today has just been that two or three strokes off that has kept him from the absolute lead. Looking at this very carefully is Aoki at minus three right now. Needs this to go minus four, so victory has eluded him. Where do you see this putting style? Dave, would you please do an analysis <laughs> of the way he this, places the club? This is a little unusual where he thinks the sweet spot is right where the shaft this is back. Gotta go back. A little more important shot here is Simon Owen. Simon at playing his third shot. Putting again, Bob. Across the asphalt and through a little cinder path and up onto the green and oh, that's awfully hot. Look out. Ooh. Only thing that saves you there is how steep that bank is. That, uh, of course, you don't know what kind of line he had. Aoki did not make that putt, but did make a par to come in at minus three for the tournament and 73 for today's round. There they are, Ben Crenshaw and Isao Aoki, who have come to like each other quite a bit, it seems. He's, oh, Aoki's a funny fellow. Very pleasant. Well, they played the last 36 holes together. They never quit. They never stopped talking. He's <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Look how high now. that mound is. He has to go over and a big break left to right there. At minus seven, he leads Owen by one, but Owen already lies three with a long way to go to the hole. But behind him is Wooster House, still lurking at minus five. I think he's too far to the right to have to worry about putting it into the bunker, and if that sounds crazy, that was done more than once this week, but he's well off to the right of that. Did he hit it hard enough? Yes, yes. Oh, put that in the hole. We've seen nobody do that all week long. You will, you will never know what a marvelous putt that is until you've tried that. Just try it for fun sometime if you ever play at St. Andrews, oh. what he just did. If you ever have the good fortune to play at St. Andrews, it's the experience of a golfing lifetime. So Jack Nicklaus gets closer and closer to his third British Open championship. A par that keeps him at minus seven. He's three under in today's round. For the first time, begins to smile a little bit. That may be the best shot he's played all day. Okay, a look at the crowd, looking on from the grandstand as Simon Owen now must get down in one putt for a par here to remain within one stroke of Jack Nicklaus and have any realistic chance of catching him on the 18th hole. Oh yes, there have been many adventures at the road hole this week. Arnold Palmer made seven two days in a row. 
driving out of bounds both times. He finally parted today. Had he not gone out of bounds those two times, he would have been fighting for the championship today. In fact, at one point, two days ago, Arnold Palmer had the lead in this year's British Open, and the whole place was electric. Again, the general scene coming down to Simon Owen. You gotta make this putt because you just uh, have to believe Jack is not gonna make any more than four at the last hole. Nope. Right across the top of the hole. Bogey five drops him down to minus five in a tie with Tom Kite and Ray Floyd and Ben Crenshaw. They're all in, however. Peter Oosterhaus is at minus five and still has two holes to complete. Oosterhaus, in fact, standing out on the fairway, watching the play in the 17th green, waiting his turn to play. So there's the way they stand right now. Nicholas by two over Owen, Kite, Floyd, Crenshaw, and Oosterhaus. Oosterhaus then the only realistic challenger along with Owen at this point. We talked about the road hole and the adventures that have been had here this week. The most dreadful, the saddest really, was that of Sunayuki Nakajima of Japan. He was on the green in two, but then putted his ball into the bunker that road bunker to the left of the green. But that was not to be the end of the misery. For this 23-year-old excellent player from Japan, he had to qualify to get here, made it by one stroke, and had been playing very well in the tournament. In fact, was a challenger. At this point, he, okay, now he was three into the bunker. That's four. Would you care to count? Well, this surprises me because generally the Japanese are very good sand players, but the sand here is a little softer than you play in Japan. And it's just not enough swing. That's five. What you're in the process of seeing right here is a man who was on the green in two and eventually two putts for a nine. Well, it's surprising, too, as I said, uh, Jim, the sand here is a lot, a lot softer than it is in Japan, and his problem is he's just not hitting it hard enough. He's got the right technique. We'll watch him try it again. One of those sad moments that will go into the St. Andrews history books. My goodness. He's coming bad. right back. How bad he must have felt. This was yesterday, remember. Almost take up residence, finally. Finally out, and two putts from there for a nine. That was the end of Nakajima's hopes in this year's British Open. He'll be back, though, as we say. He's not a marginal player. He's a very good young prospect among the Japanese, and they have a lot of them. Okay, we'll be back for the final hole of the British Open by satellite. Jack Nicholas on the 18th, the Tom Morris hole, only 354 yards, and with the wind at his back. Has he got the three wood again? It's, looks like it, doesn't it? Doesn't look like a driver. No against the Scottish sky. Cloudy but warm today with that wind we've been talking about. There he's well past Granny Clark's wine and very, very close to the green. Uh, once again, it'll be the chip shot through the Valley of Sin, almost unquestionably, up towards the hole. There he is. I would have to think that's a driver. He's so close to the green there that uh, I don't think he could hit a three wood that far. It sure happens fast, doesn't it? Two holes ago, this young man had the lead, and uh, now he's two shots back. He's, um, I almost feel like you have to make a two here to mm -hmm. have any chance of tying. And the wind isn't quite strong enough today, I don't think, to allow anybody to drive the green. At least we haven't seen it up till Simon Owen. He's going to have to whip out that little ball if he wants to put it on the green. <laughs> and they don't use that little ball, the British ball, any longer in the British Open. But there is the shot. Sure, let out the shaft, as they say. Okay, that was really a long drive, Jim, right there. Boy, yeah, it sure was. You know, Jim, I, going back to the road hole, they said that the road hole might decide this championship. Crenshaw played it in three fours and a three, and yet didn't win. So I guess that uh, they were a little, a little off their calculations. Well, it did decide it negatively, certainly for other people. Here is Tom Watson. Playing with Oosterhaus, Watson at two under for the tournament, three over on today's round. Oh, and watch that. That could go down now. Look out. That could go all the way to the bunker. It could go all the way back if you, you 
If you can't believe it, there. It finally pulled up and stopped. And that uh, was a couple of inches from being stone dead to the right. hole. It's just, that's a little funnel there that goes into that bunker. That's what we talked about earlier, that the bunker looks small, but it might as well be about three times as big because, because of the way the contours draw the ball, literally, into the bunker. Now, Oosterhaus leading a birdie. How about this shot, Dave? It's a little falling away from him, isn't it? Not too bad. Very hard shot for a tall man, especially. The ball below his feet, the ball should go to the right when he hits it, and yet he's, try he's got to play some sort of shot that is a right-to-left type. Okay, Peter Oosterhaus needing a birdie sorely to get within range of Jack Nicklaus. He's almost out of holes. This is the 17th. Okay, on the right side. Is that going to stay on top? Yes, it is. A good shot by Peter Oosterhaus as Nicholas walks to the 18th green. We'll be back for the climax. And now the tribute to Jack Nicholas as he walks, it seems, toward his third British Open Championship. He won at Muirfield in 66, and he won here in the dramatic playoff with Doug Sanders eight years ago. He told me yesterday after he finished his round that this was his favorite place to play golf. You can imagine the feeling that you have walking between those grandstands. Walking to the same green that Bobby Jones walked to so many times and later said if he had to be set down in one place on earth to play golf and nowhere else for the rest of his life, he would choose St. Andrews. Well, Jack must be feeling that way right now at any rate. Well, he has a sense of history and tradition about the game much as Jones did. That's right. In the opinion of many, the two greatest players ever to play the game, Bobby Jones and Jack Nicklaus, of course, they're supporters of a man named Hogan. <laughs> I was going to say, you get some fights started with those kind of guys. That's right. That's right. But you got to rank him certainly up in the top five somewhere. Well, Jack Nicklaus, if he wins, will have won his 17th major championship. And again, we repeat, will have won all the major titles the Big Four, as they're sometimes called, the Masters, U.S. Open, British Open, and the PGA will have won all of those at least three times. And nobody else has won all of them twice. Gary Player's the closest to it. He needs one more United States Open to make the double lifetime Grand Slam. Well, the remarkable thing to me is, as you look at this panorama in front of us is his 17th major. Most people don't win 17 tournaments in their lifetime, much less 17 majors. You looked it up this morning. How many in uh, in their lifetime? Was it 19? 19. And Men have won six, have won 16 tournaments or, of any or kind. More. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and only six current players have won 16 or more tournaments in their lifetime. This man's very close to 17 majors. It includes, of course, the U.S. Amateur, which is always included in such calculations. He's going to play the same sort of shot that everyone's been playing. I'm sure if Doug is back in Houston watching this, he wishes he'd have played a pitch and run here eight years ago instead of playing that wedge in as he did. Doug Sanders just has bad luck here this year. He wanted to play, and he submitted his entry too late. That car, by the way, is the BBC camera card. If you're wondering what that mechanized bit is there, there he comes. A little hot. Well, it was not the time to leave it uh, in the Ooh. Valley of Sin, but it is, it is a little speedy there, I'll say that. <laughs> that certainly, even for Jack Nicholas, could be three-pot territory. There's his regular Scottish caddy, Jimmy Martin. Angelo Argia does not come across the pond with Jack. Now Oosterhaus for the birdie that he most desperately needs, the wind whipping his pants. This tall man, six feet five inches tall. Very pleasant, soft-spoken fellow. Good putt, too. Oh, just, just Good run. Just went by. Good run there, about so two feet, feet back. He makes that, he's going to go to the 18th hole, two shots behind Jack Nicholas, unless Nicholas should three-putt the 18th green. That could change things a little bit now. Simon Owen of New Zealand with his second shot on the 18th hole. He also two shots behind Nicholas, running it up very nicely. But see, it's hard to stop it once you get up. But a lot can happen, Jim. Jack's Ooh, an awful long way away from that flag, and uh, again, players. Well, Jack's played here a lot. He knows it's a lot slower down there than, than it looks. And the tribute now for Simon Owen. He's earned it. A 
at this point, you can see in Nicholas's eyes that that concentration is closed in, and that he has, like nobody else in the world of golf, I think, he doesn't know anybody else is here. Look at his golf bag, and now Jack comes into view again. Well, Dave, you have any idea what is going through his mind? <laughs> He's just uh, paying attention to little detail that he's got left in front of him. I'm sure he's not thinking about anything else, about, there's not any fear in him at the moment as there would be in a, any number of players, or he gets nervous, I'm sure, but it doesn't seem he gets as nervous as a lot of people. He said that we've all, they've all been on the screen, old Tom Morris and young Tom Morris and Harry Varden and J.H. Taylor and the great James Braid and Bobby Jones. Walter Hagen was never able to win the Open Championship here great a golfer as he was, all of them through the years. Probably the only great one who has not played in the championship here was Ben Hogan. And again, the situation is that Nicholas must get down in two here. He's given himself more of a problem than you would expect. Well, then he wanted, uh, surely after Owen played the great shot up there near the hole, now if Jack uh, happens to leave it uh, in, in a little bit nervous territory and, and Owen would hold it, then Jack's got to make his to win. Nicholas has had rounds in this tournament of 71, 72, then 69 yesterday to make his move. He's three under today. If he gets down in two, he'll have another 69 is 72 in the old course. There are only two par fives and two par threes. that he hit that was great was at 17. Okay. Little grin there. <laughs> Licking his yet. chops, yes. <laughs> when he won here eight years ago, it was one of the few times he did something really flamboyant. He took his putter with both hands and flung it high in the air. And he was worried that he was going to hit him. He covered <laughs> his head. He didn't, he lost where the putter went. Simon Owen. You've just joined us is a 27 year old New Zealander who came here totally unheralded, had to qualify for the tournament and got in by just a stroke. Suddenly came out of nowhere the last two days. Owens had rounds of 70, then 75 the second day, then 67 yesterday. Today he's one under. This could put him two under and put the pressure on Nicholas. This is a hard putt too. It seems most people read the putt right to left, and it's a left to right putt. He looks like he's lined up the right way. Now, just hit it hard enough, Simon, because it's a little slower than you think. Nope, nope. As you said, down on the low side of that, like almost everybody does. So it'll be a par four with the tap in for Simon Owen, giving him a round of 71 for today after 70, 75, and 67. There it is. Congratulations to the young professional from New Zealand. He's made his name known in the world of golf. Now, Nicholas, for the one that would sew it up, barring an eagle by Peter Roosterhouse, we have to at least mention that possibility. Not a likelihood. a very gracious loser and uh, that's that's hard to come by he's well, also a very gracious winner he's been six times second in this championship as well as having won it now for three times if nothing happens 
That's right. If like Peter Oosterhaus doesn't pitch in, you, you always think back to that so-called world championship when Lou Warsham pitched into the hole, remember, when it seemed to be all over. But there's the way they stand as we're very near the finish. But stand by. We're back again at the old course at St. Andrews. Peter Oosterhaus on the 18th tee. But now, while Nicholas and Owen were playing the 18th, Oosterhaus made a bogey on 17. And so it appears that it is all over. Oosterhaus is playing out the string. I uh, missed that little putt. Mm. Well, that's great. Jack broke his drought again here at St. Andrews. That's right. There's the tee shot of Oosterhaus. That's right. <laughs> If that had gone in the hole, we would have had a playoff. And, but and Barbara it, Nicholas would have fainted. <laughs> along with Jack and the rest of us. So Oosterhaus playing it out. As we said, now he's trying to move back into a tie with those at minus five. Here's Tom Watson, who was so hopeful of winning this championship when the day began. Not his day, however. A series of bogeys on the front nine were his undoing. Been playing pretty much even par since then. It's still great playing as defending champion and uh, off to a bad start uh, with 73 the first round. Well, he also bogeyed 17, so he's now minus one or four over on today's round. The defending champion, Tom Watson. There's a lovely view of a bit of the old town, the clubhouse, the low building on the left, the big red building used to be a hotel, now dormitories for the University of St. Andrews, the temporary grandstands all around, and now the crowd gathering as the final pairing comes in. That's a tradition in the British Open that they open the fairways to the crowd so that they can totally circle it when the last pair comes in. More often than not, of course, that would include the winner. In this occasion, it's not going to. The winner is Jack Nicholas of Columbus, Ohio. And golf courses around the world. Here are scores of some other players of Hubert Green. Finished at plus three. Ballesteros, he'll be coming back again. Remember, he's just turned 21. Hale Irwin at plus two. Lee Trevino, not quite this week. Arnold Palmer played so well, but the road hole was, in fact, his undoing. He had two sevens there, twice going out of bounds. He saw Gary Player and Andy Bean. But here, the leaders at the end of this tournament with only Oosterhaus and Tom Watson still on the course. We're going to take a break now with Jack Nicholas, the leader, by two over Owen, Kite, Floyd, and Crenshaw. We'll be back for a word with Jack Nicholas. Coming through the crowd, coming to the 18th green, receiving his tribute from the crowd at the 107th British Open. And Tom Watson, the defending champion. Booster House on his home island. Watson's just about made it his home island. Well, he's played here winning it twice. That's, I was just going to say that he's a very popular young man over here. And, of course, Peter has played so well this week. And anyone that's ever tried to play well in their hometown, he's playing in his home country for one of the few times this year. And he's uh, played remarkably well with a lot of pressure on him. Well, eight years ago, Peter Oosterhaus finished uh, tied for seventh here. So he plays the old course well. So, in fact, does Tom Watson do, does not rank it in his top two, however, I, I asked him that yesterday, and he said, well, he thinks that uh, Carnoustie and Muirfield perhaps are, to his taste, better golf courses. Nicholas has won it, remember, as we see the finish. Oosterhaus needing a birdie here to move into a tie again with the men you saw at minus five. Watson is, well, he's just out of it this time. He's at minus one, four over for the day. He really had a good poke in this last hole. Yes, he did. Just, uh, But that stretch of holes on the front nine where he made four straight bogeys, of course, that was against the wind going out and totally different from the way the holes had played all week. Of Booster House today. playing first. There's a lofted club there. Yeah, but I, I can't believe that he's going to pitch it all the way on that back level. I certainly wouldn't think so. what he's done, though. No, well, no, I don't think so. He's well, pitching in high. the hollow there. Yeah. Could have left himself in the hollow That's, with that high a shot, though. You hit into that bank, you're going to stay there. Yeah. So if he gets down in two, he'll come in at minus four. He'll 
try not to leave that one at least short. The birdie try could be very important to him as far as the money list is concerned and his finish here. Watson. Out, that could come back. Into go the back in. Now you'll see why they call it that if that happens. Just there it goes. There it goes. Well, look, it's still moving. Is that, now it's uh, coming back the other way. trolley deal that you talk about? <laughs> Fletcher's trolley. That's a principle of physics that Peter Alice, our colleague on many of these telecasts, taught me. When a ball is on such a slope that neither friction or the ball sitting there uh, will hold it there. It just has to move. So Tom Watson is going to have agony right to the end. The agony that comes to you when you sin on the 18th hole. The sin here is putting it in the valley. Well, that, in a way, is the story of Tom's day. It, uh, he's, he's probably done everything wrong that he could do wrong all day, and that's just uh, a little frosting on your cake there when you leave, leave it in the one place you shouldn't at the last hole. It certainly is. There's a look at the scoreboard for the spectators here and the spectators themselves. Getting a little cool now in the late afternoon, but everybody's staying. They'll stay also for presentation and to hear a few words from the winner, Jack Nicholas, which we'll also have. Now Watson's caddy, Alfie Files, holding for him. He's about as disappointed as Tom, you can be sure. Oh, what a scary putt. Oh, well, that's about a five, five and a half foot hill there to go up over and then downhill from that part. And then try to stop it. Yeah. Downwind. Tom lies three there now in the par four hole. Oosterhouse still has a birdie attempt that will put him at minus five and in a tie for second place. Watson will go to even par for the tournament, five over for the day if he doesn't make that putt. A man from Kansas City by way of Stanford University compiling one of the great records in the game. Well, he, silent now for Oosterhouse. He did say his game was a little shaky the first part of the week. Um, I thought he'd gotten it back together, though, but uh, it is a little shaky. It'll, it'll jump up and bite you when you least expect it. Now Oosterhouse. Move into a tie for second with this. It'd be awfully nice for him to make this, to move into the tie for second and get a final ovation from the people of his home island. Goodness. It'll come any closer, but it'll be a par four for Peter Osterhaus, bringing him in at minus four for the tournament. One over, a round of 73. Today, added to rounds of 72, 70, and 69. Tom Watson's had rounds of 73, 68, and 70, but it's going to be much more than that today. It'll be 76 or 77 for Tom, depending on what he does with his final, we hope, his final putt. near the cry of the seagulls from St. Andrew's Bay. This is the putt that uh, Sam and Owen had a little while ago. Almost the same putt. Let's see if he leaves it right. No, no. Good putt. Well, finally made one profit. So Tom Watson makes his par with great difficulty on the final hole. Comes in with a round of four over par, 76 to go with 73, 68, and 70. He'll finish down the line a bit. One last year, you remember, in one of the great head-to-head -head confrontations at Turnberry with Jack Nicholas, And there, the par four for Oosterhaus. Great finish. But a finish of disappointment for both of these young golfers. Watson, who's won a lot already. Oosterhaus, who has not won a major. In fact, hasn't won a tournament in four years now. Again, as I said, we're going to have a word with Jack Nicholas, a happy man, as soon as we return to the old course at St. Andrews, Scotland, at the end of the British Open. Look at the leaderboard. This is the way they finished in the 107th British Open Golf Championship at the old course in St. Andrews, Scotland. Well, there is the crowd not leaving, you'll notice. Uh, ceremonies are very big over here. They'll stay for the presentation itself and to hear uh, Jack Nicholas being interviewed. That's just about to happen right now. Harry Carpenter, our colleague from the BBC, will be conducting the interview. There's Jack. Boy, is he happy. All right, Harry. You ready to go? Jack, many congratulations on your third British Open win. 
Thank you, Harry. I just, I don't know what to say right now. I'm just absolutely beside myself. It must give you a lot of satisfaction to come back here after eight years and win it here again. Well, the first time, of course, winning at St. Andrews was maybe one of the biggest thrills I've ever had in my game. And this year, after not winning for quite a while, much very similar to the last time I was in St. Andrews, uh, and wondering whether I was ever going to win another major again, uh, I just... Uh, I don't know, I probably played, I think probably the best tournament I've ever played in my life this week as far as hitting a golf ball and getting the ball around the hole. And uh, I just, just didn't miss very many shots. Tell us a little about the 16th, because that's where it all swung. Well, the 16th was, um, I hit a three wood off the tee and hit it just where I wanted to hit it. And Simon hit a driver, and of course Simon was a shot ahead of me at that point. And uh, I hit a 9-iron, I had 134 yards left, and I hit it, uh, a good 9-iron obviously, and it came in about, oh, about six feet to the left of the hole. And Simon evidently had a bit of a jumping lie and hit a, hit a shot that was obviously too far and hit the down bank and went away. And he didn't really have much of a shot and he really played some very fine recovery shots up to that point, and that, that one there was a very difficult one for him through the swale and he just couldn't quite get it up and down. So he made five and then I made the putt, and of course that, turn things around and of course then 17 and I turned to myself and said well all you have to do is make two fours and you can finish and uh, 17 I hit the three wood off the tee and tried to bounce a six iron into the green and I had it just a shade too far right uh, to really get enough of a bounce and get up the slope and the ball went up and came back down and I said oh my gosh here we go one of these putts one I three putted yesterday and of course I hit a good putt and almost made that. And that was, must have been 55, 60 feet. And I played three wood off of 18. I said all I needed was four, so I didn't see any reason to try and hit a driver and take any chances any, at all. <laughs> Fairway isn't hardly wide enough. <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I tried to play a little pitch and run with a seven iron, and I felt the only way that I could lose the tournament is if I didn't get it up the hill and roll it back down. And then I rolled it by and all of a sudden I forgot that Simon could have had birdie mm -hmm. and timing. And he pitched it up close. Now all of a sudden, instead of uh, playing my second shot a little closer, I went ahead and knocked it 35 feet by the hole. And now I have to get down in two. And, and of course, when I hit the first putt up two feet and Simon missed his, then of course I had two putts to win, I think. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Does this whet your appetite for a few more major wins? Well, let's, let's savor this one first, Terry. I want to... Uh, enjoy this one with, to its fullest and uh, uh, you know it's uh, uh, I'm kidding people if I think that I'm on the young side of my career um, uh, I certainly feel like I may be playing some of my best golf but uh, uh, I've been out here a long time and I enjoy it very much and I will continue to play for a while but uh, uh, let's don't worry about the future right now let's just enjoy the present Jake's been wonderful to see you winning here again congratulations thank you, thank you. Resounding congratulations for Jack Nicholas from the crowd here, the 1978 British Open champion. Now, if you're wondering what that is behind us, that is where Dave, Marr, and I are right now. Everything you've seen and heard up until now was at St. Andrews, Scotland this afternoon. However, because of a slowdown by the British Postal Service, which runs the television lines uh, in England and Scotland, the only way we could be sure of getting this program to you this afternoon, your time, was to do the following, to get two helicopters to take us from the fairways of the old course to the Lucas Air Base across St. Andrews Bay, then have two private jets fly us direct nonstop to Paris to have limousines meet us and rush us to the studio where we got, I think, less than two hours before going on the air. Our production team, led by uh, Chuck Howard, put the whole show together in that time with the commentary already on it, and that's how you got it. Always nice to spend a glamorous evening in Paris, isn't it? There is no business like show business. So. <laughs> What's your final sum up of this open day? Well, just when people were starting to say that Jack Nicklaus would probably never win another major tournament, he did. Just, just as he did after three almost uh, blank years in, in the late uh, 60s when he won at 70 at St. Andrews, the same golf course. And a word about Jack Nicklaus, I just uh, feel uh, proud that I got to play a little bit with him when I was playing and now I'm able to comment about him. 
He has been, I think, in any sport, uh, you could not find a better gentleman, win, lose, or draw than Jack Nicklaus, and I'm very pleased to see Jack win once again. I'll certainly have to second that, Dave. Talk about the game of golf making strange partners. You know, on the practice tee this morning, uh, Jack had hit some balls, and he turned around to me, and uh, said, so I'll see you later, something like that. And I said, uh, Jack, have you ever played with Simon Owen uh, before? The fellow you're going to play with today. He said, I don't think I've ever seen him before. Is he here? <laughs> and I said, gee, he was hitting some balls down there. Gee, he's gone. He said, well, gee, I, I don't know. Well, well he knew he was the 16 today. <laughs> So that was the story, as we said, of the 107th British Open. It's late at night in Paris, past midnight. I think it's about time for us to go to bed, get up and get the plane for home. We're looking forward to it. Thanks for being with us this time. Jim McKay with Dave Marr.